Welcome to This Week in Wharton County. I'm your host, Russell Mokhyber. Our guest this week is Ryan Fincham. He's the chair of the Morgan County Tennis Association. Ryan, welcome to the show. Glad to be here. Tell us a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, the work of your parents, what you've been doing since school. Okay, I, I grew up in Summit Point in Jefferson County. Um, was into a lot of different activities. Tennis was not one of them. Um, went to uh, West Virginia University, got a degree there, and I currently am employed in Berryville as a planner in the planning department. Very exciting. Berryville, Virginia. Berryville, Virginia. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, how did you get involved with tennis? Well, I guess first and foremost, I got involved in Morgan County by moving here uh, 12 years ago. Uh, my wife's from here. And my son, uh, he tried multiple sports. We did flag football, basketball, soccer, uh, baseball. Um, enjoyed them, but didn't love them. And he, he started playing tennis with Paula Osborne uh, in the Berkeley Baptist gym when he was eight or nine years old. Uh, took to it, loved it. Uh, within a year, Paula encouraged him to uh, go to Winchester, where they have uh, some tennis courts to play on. And he started playing there, and I've been in tennis ever since. And uh, what, tell us about the history of tennis in Morgan County, as you know it. As I know it, um, we have two tennis courts on Beiser Street that I, I'm not sure the year, maybe the 70s, and I believe they were built by the Lions Club, and you know we thank them for that because that that brought tennis to Berkeley Springs. Um, but it it really got rocking and rolling when Paula Osborne uh, started the first high school tennis team in 2004, 2005. Um, she trained the team on those two courts in Beiser Street, which is where the team still trains today. Um, and they've had, they've had a lot of success over the years. The current high school coach is Raynette Mock, and um, my son's on that team. Um, and then Paula in 06, 07 started youth tennis, and that's been very popular, and um, uh, we've had a lot of kids come through that program over the years, between the ages of four and 14, you know, up to high school. Um, the two courts, while we, we appreciate them, they're not regulation size. Uh, what I mean by that is the baseline to the fence is about five feet short to be regulation, and the distance between the two courts is about three or four feet short. Um, so for that reason, uh, we can't have home matches, whether it be a youth tournament or a high school match. The high school team, all of its matches are away. <laughs> yeah, so, so we've got a high school team uh, for 15 years that's never had the opportunity to have a home contest, so it's kind of unique. Uh, in that realm. Other than Visor, where are the tennis courts? Just in terms of the general population, mm -hmm. if they want to play tennis, right. where are the tennis courts? Uh, there's two tennis courts that are regulation size at Kekapen State Park. Um, they're in bad shape. Okay, the, the crack's big enough that you can kind of get your foot stuck in. Uh, we do utilize those with some of our programming. Um, I go play there since I live out that way. Um, we've been in contact, the MCTA, with um, the superintendent at the park, mm -hmm. and they're trying. And you know, they're doing a lot of renovations out there, and I believe when the renovations are complete, um, I think the tennis courts will get addressed. Um, I should say that uh, in order to host, host a home match, we do need four courts. So there's another issue there with, uh, there's condition of the courts and there's number of courts. Uh, there are several courts at the Coolfont Development. Um, it's a private community. Early on in my, you know, Tennis Venture, I tried to contact some folks out there unsuccessfully. Um, I think years and years ago in 04, 05, some of the high school practices were held there. Um, they're in really bad shape. And how many courts are there? I think six or so. I think about okay. six courts. Um, and is that it for its Beiser, Coolfont, and the State Park? Is that it for the courts in Morgan County? Yes. yes. There's no courts towards Paw Paw. There's no indoor courts anywhere. Correct. You have to go to Winchester or Hagerstown. You know, for that, and that, that's what I realized years ago when when Hayden, my son, started playing tennis. Is, you know, as I like to say, there's not one regulation-sized playable court in the whole county, which just blew my mind. So that's what kind of started me on this journey. And when you started, what did you do? Well, it's been a learning experience for sure. Um, back in 2015, I remember I, I walked into the board of education meeting, and uh, I signed up for public comment. And I stood in front of the, the board members and I said, we have a tennis team, we've had one forever, and we have no courts, let's build them. And they all shook their head and they agreed that would be great, but there was just no funding. And so it took me a while. I attended several board meetings. I spoke several times back in 2015, 2016. 
I gave PowerPoint presentations to the board. I gave PowerPoint pres presentations to the county commission, the Parks and Rec board. Um, but I got some good advice uh, about two years ago. And um, I won't embarrass the person who said it, but, but they said to me, Ryan, in a small community with limited funding, um, it takes a bulldog. And if you want something done, someone has to be the bulldog. And so I went home that night and I said, I guess I'm the bulldog. And so I've been bulldogging it ever since. How much, now you want four courts and you want them regulation so that the high school team can play home games on it or home matches on it. But how much does four co courts cost? Well, you use the word one. I want eight, but I'm, good, but I'm happy with four. It takes four courts to host a match. Okay. Uh, four courts uh, would cost, we, we feel like would cost approximately $250,000. And, and we're still learning along that process. Uh, two, three years ago, uh, the number that was given to me was 185, and it's jumped and jumped and jumped since. Hopefully it doesn't jump much more than 250. And, and what, how is your progress on getting to that goal? And where have you gotten the money from? Okay, so um, in September of last year, so we're, we're looking at a year, I think it was the 17th or 18th of September, um, things changed dramatically for our quest. Uh, the, the school board, uh, voted unanimously to allow tennis courts to be built on the property next to Warm Springs Middle School soccer field. Um, that opened the door to funding because previously when I would ask people for funding and I'd talk about this, they nod their heads and say, uh, yeah, that, that's great. We'd love to have it, but that'll never happen. Once, once the door was open to a location, uh, we started to, to secure funds. Our, our donations have come from private funding. We're talking, we, we've got some private donations in the five-figure amount, and we've got multiple donations in the you know, three figures and two figures and even one, and they all, they all matter. Um, people donate online. I, I know that um, I see the donations come in online, and I noticed a guy had given us 10 bucks. Six months later, gave us 10 bucks, and, and I, it meant a lot to me, you know. And I was out playing tennis with my son one day, and there was a guy, uh, my age I'd say, maybe a little younger, playing with his dad, he was probably 70, wearing jeans, hitting the tennis ball around. And I always introduce myself to everyone, you know, because I, I want them to know that, you know, they're important, I'm glad they're playing tennis. And that's the thing, we want people to play tennis. Anyway, it was that gentleman who had, who had donated us $10. He said, I just love to get out here and play. Jeans. Was that at Kekapen where you met him? Uh, it was at Visor Street. At Visor Street. At Visor Street. But we've got, uh, the, the county commission, I, I have to thank the county commission. They, they've, uh, each year, uh, for the last two years, we've applied for funding through, um, I'm not sure if it's hotel, motel tax, or if it's general revenue left over. I'm not, ex I don't know the nuts and bolts of that. Uh, but I know how to apply. And we, the MCTA has applied, and we've received uh, pretty substantial funds from the county commission. Uh, we've received commitment of funds from the Parks and Rec Board. Um, the, the USTA, okay, United States Tennis Association, there's branches of that. We've received $10,000 from the Mid-Atlantic region uh, for what, what they call Safe Place to Play grant. And so we wrote a grant. We explained that Beiser Street, um, while it's, uh, the, the courts aren't cracked, when it rains, the mud and the silt gets on the courts and they get really, really slippery. And we have to power wash them quite often. And so we explained to them that, you know, Kikapins are cracked, you're going to turn your ankle, Visor Street's slippery, and we won a very competitive $10,000 grant from USTA Mid-Atlantic, so that goes into our funding as well. USTA national level, they offer a $50,000 new facilities grant, up to, right? Um, we're applying for that. They like to be what they call the last source of funding, so we need to keep moving the, you know, the ball forward here. You need to get to 200000 Two fifty, right? right. Well, yes, two hundred. Two hundred, exactly. and then mm -hmm. if the fifty thousand kicks in, you're there. So yes. where are you? One sixty. You're one sixty. Believe it or not, That's since September amazing. of twenty eighteen. Yes, yes. You started your fundraising September of twenty eighteen. Well, you could say. That's a great question. We actually started fundraising back in two thousand seven. See, the MCTA was a community organization back then, and it got the word out. We need courts. And they raised close to $10,000. And I, I would like everyone to know that, that uh, the MCTA prior to me and since I've been here, we've maintained those funds. 
And that amount of money was transferred immediately when we opened up a, a second checking account, a savings account for this project. That money was taken out of our operational fund and put in there. So if you made donations in 20, 2007, you know, we, we, it's there and it's in this $160,000. Our operational funding for our youth program took a big hit, obviously our, our balance is low, but we're still rocking and rolling in that regard. Um, but yeah, we've, we've got 160 grand. A big chunk of that came recently from what I'll call an anonymous donor for now. We hope to release that at some point, but I'm still in discussions with that donor as to how they want that released. Uh, just backtrack a little bit, um, Kakapin Quartz. Mm -hmm. Why not just fix those? Wouldn't, wouldn't that do the trick? Isn't that, isn't that more cost efficient? I presented a PowerPoint presentation to the superintendent and the Kakapin State Park Foundation um, in 2016, I believe. A lot of interest, a lot of interest in, in fixing the courts. But, you know, as, as, as I found, find out a lot of places, there's always interest, but there's not funding. Um, so I, I, I worked with them for a time to try to get uh, the courts fixed. Now, keep in mind, if and when, and I believe we will fix those courts, it won't give us the number we need, right? We need four. Um, so still I, no home courts. Correct. correct. No, still no home, game, home, home, home matches for Berkeley Springs High School. Correct, or, or to have youth tournaments, right? Which you know brings in revenue and it's fun for the kids. Um, but it's a beautiful state park, and I think they should have beautiful tennis courts. And so we're, we haven't given up on that. I'm in touch with them quite often about it. Um, what would it cost to bring them up to code or whatever? You know, another thing I've experienced, kind of like I told you, the four courts we thought were 185. They jumped. They jump now. They're at 250. Um, when I first asked about, you know, I, I asked some tennis court consultants about uh, fixing those courts. 12,500, well, we can get it playable. They took a closer look, time goes by, weather works on the courts. Um, last I heard, the best remedy for those courts is to grind them up, start over. 100 grand, probably. Yeah, probably $100,000, so. The, um, you sent me pictures of the design of the new proposed courts yeah. at, uh, at next to the soccer field. Mm -hmm. And they are at an angle. They seem to be at an angle not parallel to the school or the road or anything like that, or perpendicular to the school or the road. Mm -hmm. Why are they at an angle? That's a great question. Um, when you build a tennis court, the optimal orientation to the sun is very important and you want to serve the ball north and south, right? And that gives you optimal uh, play throughout the day and, and, and during the times of year that you're playing, right? You're playing in the spring, you're playing in the fall, um, and with the sun orientation, north and south is the way you want to go. We could have uh, and originally thought about designing them in a four-court uh, rectangular one-box system, kind of laying it in on that landscape uh, in an easier fashion, let's say. But we found out quickly that if we were to get grant money from uh, tennis organizations like the USTA, they weren't even going to talk to us if we didn't build them correctly. And um, so that decision was made pretty quickly, let's build them correctly, which, which forced us into a more optimal situation, really. There's two courts, each in their own fenced-in box. That's optimal for tennis play. Because if you can imagine you're on court one and I'm on court four, and I shank a ball, and it goes through court three, court two, and all the way to your court, I've just interrupted four matches, my own included. Whereas in two boxes, I may interrupt one, but I'm not interrupting the other two. So it, it's, it's optimal, actually. Um, it'll cost a little more in fencing, uh, maybe a little more in grading, but we think worth it for sure in the grant money that we can obtain. As you know, there's a crisis of public health in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, what, is, what is tennis compared to the other youth sports have to add? I always, when, whenever I talk about other sports, I always uh, preface it with this. I love all sports. I, I love anything that keeps kids from sitting idle. I'm, I'm into that. Um, and that could be art. That could be doing plays, whatever. Um, my dad was a football coach. I wrestled, played football, played baseball up until about 10th grade when I, I kind of backed off that stuff. My sons tried all the sports. So love all sports. Tennis, however, I really like, I'm new to tennis in, in the grand scheme of things, but it is heart healthy. You are constantly moving. Um, the ball's always coming back, right? If it's not, you're playing the next point and then it's coming back. So you're constantly moving. There's been a lot of studies, um, especially for middle-aged men, um, that tennis is the best thing you can do for your heart. 
the best. Now, is in terms of youth, the MCTA believes that uh, one kid, you know, if, if, if one kid's on the tennis court and they're not in a dangerous situation, um, they're not in front of a computer screen all the time, um, we've done our job. You know, that's what we want. So it, we, we feel like it helps uh, definitely the B obesity and health problem in the state. What's your sense as to how many tennis players we have here? So, um, in Paula, Morgan, in Morgan County, in Morgan County. Um, it fluctuates year to year. Now, we just started our fall youth tennis program. Um, that's ages uh, 5 through 13, 14. Um, I was out on the tennis courts a couple times. I like to stop by and see how things are going. Um, Paula's got 30 plus, I think, kids in the program right now in the fall. Um, again, restricted to two courts, and you can't put a five-year-old with a 13-year-old. So, you know, she does an hour and a half chunk for five and six years old, and, you know, an hour and a half for seven and eight and so forth. So you have to kind of split them up uh, in age groups, and you've got two courts to work with. But uh, some of the high school team is helping her with uh, volunteering. We've got uh, Derek Thatcher. He's an assistant coach that helps with us and a uh, uh, great tennis player. Um, so I'd say we've got, you know, anywhere from 30 to 40 each season, so to speak. Uh, the high school tennis team, uh, we average, I guess I'd say anywhere from 12 to 20 a year. Again, uh, you come to tennis practice and there's two courts and there's a boys team and a girls team and there's kids like my son who can serve the ball, you know, 80 miles an hour or whatever. And then there's a brand new player. That's difficult, right? So the space limits that. I, I did hear, I mean, I think it's kind of humorous, but uh, back in, I want to say 2007, the tennis team had so many kids show up that uh, they said it, it rivaled how many kids came out for the football team that year. Um, of course, those numbers couldn't be sustained because when you're standing around waiting for your turn, you know, it's hard to keep them on the court. But I think, I think numbers-wise in the region, we do pretty well. When is, when is the high school season, tennis season? Um, Season starts the last week of February for practice. We start matches about uh, last week of March, something like that. Um, in the world of West Virginia tennis, the, the dominant tennis teams are those that can play indoors. Um, you can imagine finding time to practice on tennis courts in February, March, even April. It's a little difficult in the spring with the rain. Um, but we, we work in and around the, the weather Where, as best we can. Where's the closest indoor facility here? Uh, uh, Winchester. Winchester. Uh, yeah. Do, do the, do, does the high school team get to play there at all? They do. Uh, what, they they have the option uh, to go privately anytime yeah. they want. Um, West Virginia rules uh, really limit coaching of players out of season. Um, so we encourage them to do that on their own. We do um, uh, allow them to go as groups and work with the pros over there. It's called Stonebrook Club, and then there's, mm -hmm. uh, there's another Winchester Country Club Typically, the kids are going to Stonebrook, um, and uh, it really helps if you can get out and play in the winter. The, the four-time state champion in AAA tennis, um, uh, J.J. Mercer, is from Huntington. I think his, his father may be the coach at Marshall University, um, plays indoors all the time. That's the key. Yeah. Yeah. And we're, but we're not looking to be state how, champions. We just want to get kids out to play tennis. How is know? the high school team looking this year? Looking good. Uh, I, 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 I must mention, or, or the, the kids from last year will, will be on me if I don't mention last year. It's a great right. season. Um, both girls and boys uh, played well. We sent seven or eight kids to the state tournament. They have to play through a 14-team region. Mm -hmm. um, our region runs from Berkeley Springs up to Wheeling, over to close to Parkersburg at St. Mary's, down to Petersburg and back up. And, and remember, we have no home matches. And so it's a double-A region. Double-A region. Yeah. So that's 100% on the road, right? Uh, we won the region last year, both in record and at the tournament. We play a regional tournament. Uh, we played at Fairmont State University, uh, and we won the 14-team region in the boys' bracket. Um, our boys went to states, and, um, and I, I guess I'd be remiss if I don't mention my son, as a freshman, uh, made the all-state uh, AA tennis team by, by finishing fourth place. He was in the semifinals this year. Wow. And so he's a sophomore this year. Sophomore this year. Yeah. Um, okay. A couple of things. Mm -hmm. One is projection on the new courts. Mm -hmm. uh, when do you think they'll be in? Well, I'm optimistic that they'll be in uh, by next summer. Let's say that. Originally, when I started this quest, spring of 2020, 
is what I was shooting for. I, I wanted the courts finished so that this coming season we were on them. Um, that ship has sailed, that's fine. I, you know, you, you keep moving forward. Um, but we believe that uh, we can raise the needed funding uh, and get through the process and get them built by next summer. That's great. And just back to uh, te- the level of tennis in Morgan County, what about adult players in Morgan County? That's what I was trying to get to. How many, how many you know, tennis fans are there here and how many are out playing on the courts that we have here? Well, that, that's a tough number. I've tried to get to that number, actually. But I can tell you that because I spend so much time uh, at Pfizer and at Kekapin, even just driving by, um, they're used quite often. Uh, um, Scott Fortney, the superintendent at Kekapin, mentioned to me uh, several times that tennis courts around the state are being converted to other uses because they're not used. He said, that's not going to happen at Kekapin. He said, they're used. In fact, some of the state... Uh, uh, state park officials who right. have come here have noted, hey, your, your tennis courts are used. So um, I think it's, recreationally, I think tennis is popular. I mean, when I'm out there, like I say, there's people in jeans and people just kind of hitting the ball around. And then sometimes we're out there and there's people who, who you can tell have played a lot of tennis that are here. Um, Kikate State Park, 50s, 60s, I'm not sure how long ago, those were uh, uh, very nice clay courts. And people would travel from you know, miles around to come play at Key Cape, and you had to schedule a time to play. Um, so if you have nice facilities, I think it'll even increase, but I think the numbers are more than, we, than what people think. Are you pushing for clay courts back again at Key Cape, or is that impossible? Oh, no, not impo- nothing's impossible with money, right? Um, is but, that pricier? Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah, and a lot more maintenance. You have to keep those maintained, as, a, as opposed to a hard court with asphalt with a coating on it. Um, power washing and resurfacing every, every 10 to 15 years is, is your maintenance cost. Will the new courts at the middle school be open to the public? Absolutely. That, is, uh, that was a, um, a requirement by the MCTA, and it was luckily for us a requirement by the school board that you know, if we're going to do this, these are community courts. Yeah, and, and we do run into that a lot as we travel, my son and I. Um, high school courts are locked, and you can't get on. Now, I'll say in most of those communities, there's public courts, you know, so you can go somewhere else. Here, these will be community courts and school courts. And except, of course, when the high school is playing or when they're practicing. Certainly. So there'll be, there'll be times when the public won't be allowed onto those courts. Sure, sure. Mm-hmm. All right. So you're anticipating summer of next year mm-hmm. and uh, an opening. What's going to be like a grand opening or something? Or what do you think? Well, we're hoping to have a grand opening tournament. You know, um, each year, Kaiser. So then, no, wait. So this will be the first time the high school will play there will be the spring of 2021. Correct. But they'll be practicing from the summer on. There. That's our hope. If we, yeah, yeah, get them out on court, certainly. Um, we travel every summer to Kaiser. They have a, a tournament there on their courts to raise money for their tennis programs. And uh, all those folks told us this year we're, they're chomping at the bit to come to our tournament. So, um, yeah, we hope to have an inaugural you know, opening tournament f- uh, for sure. If, if I may, um, yeah. w- we have a $40,000 uh, shortfall right now. And so um, I, I have to say, you know, that the MCTA is a 501c3 um, and donations are tax deductible. It's a nonprofit. It's a nonprofit. Um, you can donate at our <clears throat> website, uh, mocotennis.org. Um, you can donate through any member. You can donate at Lot 12 Public House. They're a, a drop off location for donations. Um, and, and, you know, we welcome donations at any level. We, we're about ready to start a huge fundraising drive again. We're going to call it the 90-day challenge. Uh, so hopefully by the end of the year, raise the additional $40,000 in small and large donations. Well, Ryan Fincham, congratulations on this campaign. And we look forward to the new courts and seeing you out there. Appreciate uh, coming on very much and, and talking tennis. And I wanted to Thank you so give much. these to you. Oh. I want you to get out and play some tennis. It's good for you. All right. Do I get the racket too? Can't give you that. It's my okay. sons. So. All right, good. So I go out, get a racket, and then we're going to start playing tennis again. Please do. Thank Please you do. so much. Thank you. And thank you for watching This Week in Morgan County.